How's it going, everyone? Pastor Nate here at Wake World Church and Wake World Ministry. We are concluding the series, Becoming the Called. And I got to tell you, I mean, I've, I've, I've done series in the in the past doing this Wake World Church, and I, 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 I uh, this, something just came to mind. Uh, it'll be almost a year come August, I believe, of Wake World Church. But Wake World Ministry has been... Uh, in the process of growing and, and, and uh, I don't want to say established because ministry belongs to Jesus first and foremost, but he's called me to do this ministry almost three years now. And it kind of has to do with, you know, <sighs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Becoming the called is exactly that. It's understanding that the ministry belongs to him in the first place. He just places us in it. We may say, for example, um, the, the church that I attend, as far as a building, the temple of worship I attend, the banner we fly, or the name of it, is City of Life Ministries. Or it may be something, it may be like the church I used to go to, uh, Lancaster Community Church. It may be something different where you're at. That may be the, man, the, the banner or, or the name. But ultimately, the ministry belongs to First, by Christ, because he's the one that started it. We are just continuing it. It's the same thing with church. And, and again, if you, if you watch this, this is why I ask people to go back and watch the series. If this is your first time watching it, because there's some things in there that, man, the Holy Spirit taught me while, while delivering the sermon to you all. But I also, I'm, I'm, I'm open as much as I can into explaining things like the arrogance I had versus the lesson I learned. What does this have to do with becoming the called and, and ministry and church? It has to do with exactly this is the arrogance that I had is I said I was going to build a church. I was going to start a ministry. And that may make, I mean, I'm, I'm really being uh, um, critical here. Um, a lot of people is like, well, I know what you mean. You're doing this for Jesus, so why are you being hard on yourself? No, in all honesty, I, I, I said to myself, I'll just become a pastor. I remember even having this conversation with my mom because at, at that point in time, I, I felt called to quit my job and just do ministry for six months, and I did. And um, I called my mom. I said, Mom, I'm, I'm going to do this. And she, I mean, and God did take care of me for those six months, but it was through learning, and I'm still learning just like you are. That's the beautiful thing about this is if the church really works together, we'd understand that we're all learning together. We're all part of the same body. There's diversity in the body. That's one of the most important things I've learned from uh, Pastor Brian Sanders is I, I got a lot of this information from him in his series um, from the Underground Network. But the diversity means there's different parts. We're all not the same. But the beautiful thing is we're part of one body. And God, Jesus, is the head of that. He is the head of the church. He is the head of the ministry. But going on, um, what I was saying is, I told my mom, I said, you know, I'll just become a pastor. I'll, I'll start a church. And financially, I'll be taken care of. God will take care of me because I'm taking care of his kingdom. And that may be true, but I had in my arrogance, I was going to build a church. Church has already been built. That's, that's the thing that I don't want people to, to get confused on as I go through this series. series. The church has been built. It's not the building. It's us. It's something that can't be built with hands. Oh, hallelujah. It can't be built by hands. Because this it can't be built by hands, but it was made by his hands. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That, that's worth the reward. It can't be built by hand. It, 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 can't, it wasn't built by hands, but it was made by his hands because it's you and me. And he is the head of that. He is the head of the church. He is the head of the ministries. We are just building upon what he started. But let me ask you this. In summary of everything we're going to go over, and we're going to go over 1 Corinthians 12 again because it's so important to understand this. I'm not going to take a lot of your time. It's not needed. Remember this. Again, oh, that, that's just so good. Ministry is not built with our hands. It was built by his hands because it's us. We are the church. 
Becoming the call is exactly that. Becoming what he has called you to do. And in the midst of what he's called you to do, he gives you gifts, spiritual gifts, as we talked about. He also gives you a role in his kingdom, a role in his church, a role in the ministry that he started. But let me ask you this. Again, I, I told you that I'm not trying to uh, um, build something that was already started. See, this is the thing. We are trying to build something else and start something else versus building on what God has already started. Well, he told Peter that on this rocks, on this rock, I will build my church. He said, you will build my church. And hell itself will not stand against it. You know why one of my favorite sayings from um, um, Church, church Zero, uh, Peyton Jones talks about how we need to go back to the biblical text of what the church is. And get back to that foundation. Because together the five roles, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, the teacher makes a fist. And it's punching the devil back. It's, it's, it's how God wanted his church to be to reach people to teach people to grow people and to call people and if you look at the five roles of what that is that's exactly what it is that's exactly what we're doing the the, the, the scripture says to build or equip the saints to build up the ministry that jesus has already started it is nothing new that we are starting but it's what we need to get back to and start building what he's already created. My point in this is, is people, he did not de design you to die in a pew. He designed you to be a part of his kingdom. He designed you to be a role in the church. The greatest opportunity of all starts at the cross. But that's where it starts. There's so much more he offers you. He gives you the physical gifts that you've had for a long time. But then you have spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you, his Holy Spirit. And then the roles of the church that Jesus was every single one of them that he says, okay, some of you are going to be apostles. Some of you are going to be. Now, catch this. I want you to understand this. There's a difference between an uppercase apostle and a lowercase apostle. Again, I've talked about this a little bit, but just just, just bear with me here. Um, the uppercase of those that saw Jesus, walked with Jesus when he was here, saw his resurrection, saw his death and resurrection, and saw him ascend. That is an uppercase apostle. Those are were the original 12, even when they they uh, they um, they had to fill the spots of Judas and so forth. So they called others, okay, so you're going to be basically one of the original 12 because you you know you walked through with us, you're, you're maturing your faith, and so on and so forth. But the lowercase a apostle still is needed today. Mo a lot of people say it is not. I ask you, where do you have the audacity? Where, where are you right when God says in his word we're about to read that he... Chooses it this way, but God, it says in verse, uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, 18, and it says, but as it is, God arranged the members of the body, God arranged, each one of them he has chose. So where are we to say that it's not needed? No, God, it's not needed. Nope. We're going to go ahead and build a reformed church. And it's so true with Pastor, uh, um, not Bland, Sylvester, <laughs> yeah, Sylvester Bland, actually he would agree with this, uh, Brian Sanders the reformed church that we've created has deformed the church of what God originally designed. And because of that, people, our country's hurting. The church is hurting. And if you remember all the way back at the beginning of this, one of the first things I taught, how does God use you? Because in order to be, understand what it means to become the called is, okay, Lord, how, how, how can you use me? How can you use me? Before we understand all this other stuff that's more meat than milk, that's a biblical um, 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 example there for you. It's exactly this. Be humble and willing in everyday situations. Or what was it? Uh, uh, in everyday situations, I'm sorry. In everyday situations, be humble and willing. Because in everyday situations, man, if you're not humble, how can God use you? Truly use you and not, oh, look at me. Instead of, oh, look at him.
to sum this up, people, um, let me just go through this text here. But first, I want to go into Ephesians because chapter uh, 1 Corinthians 12, um, the whole thing, it talks about the spiritual gifts and it talks about um, the body of Christ, the, the different roles of the church, how there's many of them. From the spiritual gifts to the to the to the um, also you have the actual position and role of the church. We're not going to read the whole chapter. We're just going to go from verse. Um, uh, we're going to go from 12 on through the remainder. But first, if you'll turn with me quickly to Ephesians chapter 4:11. And it says this. And he gave the apostles, in other translations it says some, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers, and just to be a critical thinker here, it is a lowercase a when it says apostles, so that is again needed today. If you don't know what that is, or any of these are, go look at the, the sermon series, people, because you are called to be one of these. Or you may have a primary like I, and you may have a secondary. But it says he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry he started and building up the body of Christ, the church that he started, until we obtain the unity of one of the of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturehood, to met to the measure of the stat the, the stature of the fullness of Christ, so, so that we may not listen to this because this is America right now. This is the American church in a whole. I know there's some that are actually more on the biblical side of things and are trying to to build off of what God has already started, but there is a majority that this verse sticks true so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves carried about every wind of doctrine by human cunning by craftiness and deceitful schemes rather speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in every way unto him who is the head unto christ from the whole body joined and held together from every from every joint, listen to that, every joint, so every part of this, even the, the most of what we're about to read, even the, the parts that we don't think are important, are important, because they're like the joints and they hold us together. Every joint with which is equipped, when each, listen to this, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow, so that it builds itself up in love. I love the scripture where it talks about you have forgotten your first love. Our first love is Jesus. It's not how big we can get the church. It's, it's, it's awesome to see people grow in the congregation. It's awesome to see the, 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 the pews fill up. To, oh, man, we, we got to expand the building. Why not branch out? Why not teach those people that they have a role in God's kingdom? He didn't call them to die in that pew. But to go and be a part of the kingdom. Go and be a part of the church. Because the pastor is not the one role that needs to lead the church. The pastor, if you are a true pastor by what God's definition says, you are to be a shepherd of the people in the congregation. Let the teacher teach. Again, I, I, I have the, I, I have the um, position title as a pastor because that's the only thing that's known today. But in all honesty, I am an apostle and a prophet by definition of what God's word says. And if you really look at the characteristics of that and the distinctives, I'm not making that up when I say it humbly. That is, that is me. That is who God made me to be. But it also part of being a, 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 a prophet is one who teaches as well. But there are some that, man, they just have that role, that, that distinctiveness of a teacher. Man, if you just have a shepherd teaching, it's so true what Brian Sanders said. You will lose, you, you, just, just bear with me, just bear with me. 
But you know what the beautiful part? What it says when each part is working, every single part of what we just read was Jesus. He was every single one of these at the same time. So when we are working together as all five of these, we together make that image of what Jesus Christ was when he was in the flesh. With him being the head of the church. He was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, and the teacher. There is none above him. He was the. But he also says, we are also called to do what he has done. It says to be like Christ. Well, Christ was every single one of these, and he calls you to be a part of his kingdom, a part of the church. Not to just be someone, a Christian that goes to church every Sunday and maybe Bible study during the week and goes and sits in the pew every Sunday. And then goes to somebody's house and sits on the couch. Discipleship is, is, is great. But where is the next part to that? The shepherd is supposed to shepherd people into understanding God has called you to be a part of this. And it doesn't mean go to seminary school and become what is the only position talked about today, and that is a pastor. That role is not working anymore, people. That role is not God's church. We together make this whole thing. And in, 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 in the closing point here, and it says go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to go to verses 12 into um, to the, the 13th chapter. And it says, for just as the body is one and, as, and has many members, and all of the members of the body, though our many are one body, not pew sitters, not people that sit in pews, not pew sitters, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized under one body. Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, we're all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but many, not a pastor of the congregation. That's not the church. That is one part of the body. There's many parts. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would make it any less, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. So in the flip side of things, some people say, well, God's called me to be a teacher. I wanted to be an apostle. Look, you have importance. That doesn't mean that you don't matter. You have a big role that God specifically designed you to be. You heard Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I have a plan and a purpose for you. This is the plan and purpose for you, church. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense, I'm sorry, uh, because if I were an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were to say, were, were an eye, where would the sense of hearing, let me read that again, verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, if the whole body were pastors, where would be the sense of hearing, where would be the sense of a prophet, where it be the sense of someone that has been called to go out and do church planning. People, the word church, just to stop right here for a second, the word church means the original word for that was ecclesia. Called out. The ones that we've been called out, called to and called from. Did you know before uh, Christians, uh, we, were, we were referred to those who follow Christ as Christians, it used to be called the way. That is a word of action. The only word of action people do today in the church, and I'm not knocking every single church. I'm trying to wake the church up, that we need to go back to what God's word says the church is, not what we made the Reformed church to be, because it's not working anymore. The wheel's broken. We don't need to fix it. We need to just go backtrack and go back to where God's word said the church is supposed to be and go forward from that and build on that. Instead of trying to build our own thing, saying, God, hey, we, we don't need these five. We got a pastor. That's all we need. Right? That's it. No, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that.
It does not work like that. The word ecclesia, again, means called out, called to, and called from. And before we are ever known to be Christians, Christ followers, we were called away. Does that sound like somebody that sits in a pew every Sunday? You that do, and I myself at my church do, but I am hungering to become more of what God has called me to be. Not who I want to be, who he's called me to be. I'm, I'm trying to strive after the best I can of how to serve his kingdom, how he made me, and how he enabled me, how he created me, so that I may be a part of that, that, that service. So I may be a part of that kingdom. What, what that all means. This is, this is all information that I have learned, people, that I am teaching you. Because you are not designed to die in a pew. That's not your calling. God has a specific calling for you. It's not to go to church every Sunday and sit in a pew. I'm not saying don't go to church anymore. I'm saying ask God what you want, he wants you to do inside of that church. Maybe outside of it. Maybe, maybe he is calling you to do church planning. Maybe he is calling you to be a teacher. Maybe he is calling you to be a shepherd or an evangelist or, an, or an, a prophet. That's my point. He is calling you to get out of the pew and ask him what he's made you to do. What he's created you to do. What his plan is for you. And step into it. Because I don't know about you, I want to see the five working together so I can see more of an image of who my Lord and Savior is. I hope that makes sense. Because when we all work, I don't know if you guys caught that, when we all work together, that's what we are displaying. It's a good thing no one was sitting right here because I just spit all over. Going on, going on. If all were a single me member... Where would the body be? If all were pastors, where would the congregation be? Let's let's flip that around. If all were congregation, where would the growth be? Where would the church be? Because yes, we make the body of Christ every single believer, but the church is positions that he called us to be, so we may equip the saints in the church, so we may equip the disciples that are becoming followers of Christ that are students first, exactly how some of you are and how I am. We're always going to be a disciple. We're always going to be a student. But it doesn't stop there. It continues here. Let me read that again. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head or the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body, it seems to be weaker or, or indispensable. Let me read that again. On the contrary, the parts of the body, the parts of the church that seem to be weaker, or maybe they don't know as much, like children that go ahead and, and they, they tell people about Jesus a lot more than adults do. I'm just saying doesn't mean that they are any less important than the adult. And vice versa, the adult is any less important than the children. The congregation any less important than the pastor. The congregation any less important than, than the elders. We are one body and we have not been that. The body of Christ is in a cast. It can't move. Because of the denominational differences, because of the one role, or maybe even two if you want to be technical, uh, the teacher and the, and the shepherd, they say that, that, that kind of just entwines in one. Eh, not so much. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you uh, uh, something that I learned from, again, Bra Pastor Brian Sanders of uh, Underground Network. Why we need every single part. But just to be clarified. The weaker are indispensable. And on the, on, on the parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow a greater honor. And on the unpresentable parts that we are, are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God ha has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division. 
in the body, that there may be no division in the body, that the members may have the same care for one another. How will they know you by your fruits? You love one another. You love your brother in Christ. You love your sister in Christ. You're equipping each other. If one member suffers, all suffer. If one, if, if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, if you are the if you are the body of Christ and individual members of it, he's saying he's making a point there. Now, you, the person that sits in the, the, the pew every Sunday and goes to Bible study every week, you are a part of the body of Christ. You have a role in his kingdom. You have a role and a position in the church, the body of Christ. And in the church body that you attend, the temple worship that you attend, whatever that banner may be that you fly as the title of that ministry, again, it first belongs to Jesus, if it's about Jesus. If it's about God's kingdom, then it belongs to God first. He started a long time ago, just because there's a different name on it. It's first is about Jesus. It's first about his kingdom. And you are a part of that. And he has a plan and a purpose for you in it. Verse 28, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles. And then it goes into the, the things of the, the spiritual gifts because that is chapter 12. It's the spiritual gifts and, the, and also talks about the whole body of Christ and the, 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 how the, there's different parts to that. Then the miracles, the gifts of healing, helping, administrating, various kinds of tongues are all apostles. No, but neither are you supposed to all be just sitting in pews. Are all prophets? No, but again, you're not designed to sit in a pew. Are all teachers? No, but again, you are not designed to sit and die in a pew. Do you all work miracles? No. But you're also not called to sit in a pew. Do all possess the gifts of healing? No. But again, you're not designed. You are not created to sit and die in a pew. God created you to be a part of this. Do all possess the gifts of healing? Again, no. Do all speak tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But it says, earnestly desire the higher gifts. It says, earnestly desire these things. And I will show you still a more excellent way. And this is my ending point right here. And I, I want you to really think about this because we have lost our first love. And it is about doing this for Jesus instead of, you know what, man. And this is no offense to a lot of people. As I said, uh, Pastor Brian Sanders, I've been talking to him, uh, uh, talking about him a lot. He's a great brother in Christ. But what he got, what he, what he spoke about, what he teached, I learned he got it from God's word. He's giving glory to God. And you know how I know that is because he's saying what God's word said for us to do. It's not about him creating a new way. It's about going back to the way. Oh, hallelujah. The way, the truth, the life. About being the church again. I talk about Peyton Jones. I'm not trying to advertise his books. It's not about becoming an author of a book. Expounding more on this. It should be more important about this. Than writing a book and making yourself 15 minutes of fame. There are many out there, many pastors that call themselves pastors out there that are wolves in sheep's clothing. And, I, and I'm not saying every single one of them, but I'm not afraid to say they exist. And they are literally pastors out there that are agents for Satan himself. Trying to completely sway the church a different way and going uh, 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 against what God's word says the church is, against what his word says entirely, teaching something else. That is why we need these rules. That's why you need to be a part of this. We have lost our first love, and that is Jesus and doing this for the kingdom of God. The love for the lost. And it goes to say this, I will show you still a more excellent way. And it goes into verse thir and to chapter 13. This is the, the love chapter. Many, many people know this. this. is actually one of my 
um, my favorite uh, chapters as far as uh, verses 8, uh, um, what is it, uh, uh, verses 4 on through is one of the beautiful things to read at a wedding or, or understanding God's love for us. But it goes to say this, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not loved, I am a noisy gong of a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all ministries and all the knowledge and, and I have all faith as to remove mountains, but I have not loved, I am nothing. If I do anything outside of the love that Jesus has for me and displaying that to others and my love for the lost with that, I gain nothing. This is, this is meaningless. This is just me puffing myself up, but it isn't. My love is for the lost. Why, man, I don't get a lot of views on YouTube. I used to when I did my, my, uh, my current world events and stuff, but God is, is just trying to get, that's what the Acts movement is. That's what this has to do with this active church teams. It's church planning inside the homes, inside of the community. Because for too long, the church has told the community to come into the church, the church instead of the church going into the community. We are the church people. We are the body. And we have been doing a broken system. There I go spitting on people again. But it says this going on. I give, if I give away all I have and I deliver my body to be burned, but I have not loved, I gain nothing. If we don't do this out of love, we do it in vain. Why are all five rules important to this day? If we say there's no need for any of these five, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, the teacher, or even put in the spiritual gifts to that, We're making something else in what God's word said. Again, in the verse 18, it said that God has arranged this. God made these positions. God made it this way. Why can't we get that? But I want you to think of America as a whole and our church, and even across the whole world as a church. Because we are the body of Christ by believers. We just go into a temple of worship to worship him in a fellowship together. But I ask you, is even that happening? But I want you to think, just because this is based, I'm, I'm trying to do what God told me to do here at home, but I hope this expands overseas because it's Wake Up World Ministry, not Wake Up America Ministry. Without the prophets, if we take out the pro, if, or, I'm sorry, with, if we take out apostles, we lose the mission. We will start fighting, and we will just look disgusting as the church. Let me read that again. If we take out the apostles, we lose the mission. His kingdom work. Serving Jesus because we loved him, because he loves us, and there are many lost people out there. That's the mission. Without apostles, we'll start fighting. Without apostles, we'll start looking disgusting. Take out prophets. We will lose the voice of God. We will become a dead faith. We will become legalism. We become religious words without life and spirit. Because there is no correction, there is no change, there is no growth, there will be no church. Take out evangelists, you lose the lost people, and you will disappear very, very fast. Take out shepherds, you will lose compassion and become heartless. We became the worst version of the church that no one would want to be a part of. Let me read that again. If you take out shepherds, you will lose compassion. We will become heartless. We will become the worst version of the church that no one should be a part of. On the flip side of that, if we only just have a shepherd, people will stay where they're at instead of grow. Take out teachers, you become apostate. 
Let me read that again. Take out the teachers and you become apostate. You lose orthodoxy. You no longer are a Christian. You no longer are a part of the way. Let me read this again. You take out the role of the teacher or you confuse the two or try to intertwine them. You will become apostate. You will become everything different than what God's word says. And that is happening today. We are teaching doctrines. We are teaching things that God's word specifically says no. This isn't my way. And this isn't Nate trying to get his way. It's not, people. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't write this. I, I'm re, re, repeating what another brother in Christ said, but he gets it from God's word. And I get it from God's word. And this is the truth. Modern day American church is becoming apostate. We have, we have lost orthodoxy. We are no longer Christians. We have become legalism. And because we drift so far from the truth, we become something else entirely. I don't know about you, friends, my brothers, my sisters out there. But I want to be what God's word says the church is. I want to be what he calls his people. I don't want to be what modern day society says is okay. Because in God's eyes, it's not what he created. In God's eyes, it's not what he designed. In God's eyes, it's not what he built first. It's not his foundation. I want to be what he says that we're to be. Because... You want to see miracles. You want to see exploits happen again, especially in these end days. we got to become the church again. Because if we don't and, and things really start happening, and you know, I, 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 this is going to seem kind of backwards, but adversity is going to help the church come together. And we're seeing a lot of it. But people, do not live and die in a pew without knowing that God specifically has called you to be a part of his church. And it's not to sit in a pew your whole life. It's to go out and preach the gospel. It's to go out and make disciples. It's to go out and be the church. It's to go out and seek the lost. It's to go out and to teach them. It's to go out to shepherd them. It's, it's to go out and church plant. It's, it's, to, it's to go out and tell people of God's word. And give warning of what he says. Let me ask you a question in my ending here before I do an altar call. Is let's say the majority of Paul Day's people that were that are the church back then, and they are in every single one of these roles. Imagine if they came to some of the churches in America or across the world today, how lost they would be, how they wouldn't know where to go for the, the different roles and why they're established. If they had questions or wanting to help or wanting to build up or equip to exactly what God's word says. Because we don't teach it anymore. And if this is your first time hearing God's word or Jesus like this, and the most important thing about this people is Jesus. Because again, Jesus was every single one of these roles. Jesus was every single one of these parts of the body. And we're not. But he's given us a part of that. So that when we work together, we show what he is and what he was when he was in the flesh. We make that image of him. Without that, we're not. We're making something totally different. We are becoming apostate. We're losing orthodoxy. We're creating our own denominations and, and, and doctrines. My denomination is a Jesus follower, and that's, uh, that's what I try to do. And with that, people, the greatest opportunity you have starts right here. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, man, it's, it's as simple as just having a conversation with him because he is God. He is the one true God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He, he, he knitted you together in your mother's womb. He knows everything about you. And again, he has a plan and a purpose for you, what we just spoke about. And he wants you to know him. This is the start right here, what he did for us on the cross. It's not an idol. It's showing man where my life 
truly started, where your life really can truly start. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. He will meet you where you're at. I am not the man that I was even last year. Yet alone almost three years ago now that I truly became a follower of Christ. I thought for a long time I was. I, I know. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, um, he did come to this earth to die for your sins. He, he came because he didn't want to send his wrath and wipe everything out. No, he came so he could have the wrath poured upon himself instead of us to build the bridge again with us and him as God. So we can have a relationship versus a religion versus just a bunch of rules and regulations. He wants you to know him. He wants you to seek after his heart and have him search yours. He died for all the sins that we committed. So the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, and this, this, is, this is how you invite him into your life. God's word says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you believe within your heart that he died and he rose again from the grave in three days, defeating death. And you for, you ask forgiveness of your sins that he paid for on that cross. This is just having a conversation saying, Lord, I, I, I have sinned against you. I've broken your laws and, and, and I am far from perfect, but you are perfect and you died for and I want to receive you in your life. I want to receive you in my life. And, and, and I want to give you my life. If you truly believe that he died and rose again, you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you ask for forgiveness of your sins, you are forgiven. To expound on that, again, I'm not going to tell you to repeat after me. I'm, I'm going to tell you to go have a real, just go and talk to him. Believe it or not, he will listen and you will hear a response one way or the other. This might have been your response now as you've heard us time and time again, but now you just feel the Holy Spirit just him tugging on you harder, saying, come home. God's word says that, man, that if you accept him, another name is written in the book of life. Welcome home, my sister, my brother. This is where it starts. And we have eternity together with him. Heaven is not the same without Jesus. I don't tell you this so you can just go to heaven. I tell you this so you can be with Jesus in heaven. Please share this. Um, God bless you all. And again, please share this because again, this is not information that I, I ask people to to, uh, to hold to themselves. This is why I taught this. So other people can wake up and understand that you have a calling in God's kingdom. You have a calling in the church. God bless you all.